and welcome to Concert Pipeline. I'm Steve Jones. Uh, today on the program, we have the amazing Lyrics Board. Uh, now, I had a chance to talk to Lyrics Board. We had a, a really freaking great conversation. We went deep. Uh, you know, he shared uh, a lot about uh, his, you know, passions, what he's looking forward to, goal setting, uh, kind of how he went about making um, his most recent albums and um, and kind of the intricacies that went into that. And, and we'll get into that in just a little bit. Uh, before we do, um, I do want to share, uh, this was opening weekend this past weekend uh, for duck hunting, which is it's like, you know, one of my biggest holidays, almost ahead of my kids' birthdays. Uh, but uh, uh, it was it was a lot of fun. And so I, uh, I, I'll kind of relay what um, what went down for my opening day, uh, opening weekend uh, of duck hunting. Um, so I uh, hunted both days at Grizzly Island um, uh, in out in Sassoon. And, uh, and so Friday afternoon, I went out and, uh, and got in line pretty much and waited for like 14 hours, uh, to be able to, uh, to get in. Uh, my buddy had a reservation for us to be able to, uh, get in early. So I wanted to use every possible advantage and make sure that we got the spot that we, uh, that we wanted to hunt. Uh, so, uh, so I was in line, uh, pretty early in the afternoon and just uh, was planning on hanging out you know I brought a couple of beers some snacks and I talked to some friends on the phone and um, you know and uh, just a book and you know a, sh a show I downloaded on my iPad right um, and then after, uh, about half an hour after I uh, got in line the next person in line was this big RV like a massive big RV and it was actually my daughter's one of my daughter's old teachers and her boyfriend and so talk to them for a bit uh it was cool catch it up and uh and kind of talk uh talking to them getting getting their history with hunting and uh and uh and so they decided to have a little bit of a disco party uh in their rv that evening and uh and so i went to sleep by like eight right i had re read my book and watched a show and i was like i'm done i'm gonna get some sleep because i have to wake up at like two o'clock in the morning um to get ready for when they start to let people in right and uh and so uh 10 30 i wake up and they were still having the disco on in the rv and i'm like ooh, they might have some trouble waking up the, the next morning uh which they did so my buddy showed up uh he got uh there a little bit after three uh met up with me and we were waiting in line until like 3 50 when they start moving the line and uh uh my friends in the uh, rv behind us uh were still not awake even when the line went move, uh, started to move so i gave them a courtesy tap uh on the window to to wake them up and kind of get them moving uh they had no idea really what they were doing but they were out to to get some birds right um no fault it's the, that's just uh, how they were rolling and um, and so uh, we got in, uh, I biked out to the spot that I, that I wanted us to get. It's the same spot I hunted for opener last year with, with my buddy Ben. And, um, and then um, we met up at that spot. Um, it was great birds, lots of birds flying uh, right at first light. And, um, and we shot a couple birds pretty quickly. After that, I didn't do as well, but um, our buddy John met up with us after he was able to get in a little while after shoot time. And, uh, and you know, he shot a bunch of birds. He's a much better shot than I am. I had some opportunities in my shooting, so wasn't too excited about that. But, um, but I, uh, shot three birds ultimately and brought three birds home. Uh, I actually brought five home um, total um, because uh, I was gifted a couple of, uh, of extra birds uh, from my buddy Ben and from his dog who found a bird on the way back. Uh, so uh, five birds in the fridge then, uh, three birds shot, which, you know, my opener last year, I brought home two. Uh, so, or I, I'd shot two. I think I brought a couple extra home last year too, which is pretty cool. Uh, and then uh sunday hunt right back out at grizzly I was going with my buddy john and joe uh my buddy joe and it was a uh a momentous hunt for me because um i haven't hunted with joe in like four years um don't need to get into the reasons why per se uh right now but just to know that it, it's excited to hunt with joe again right and um and he was taking me to a, a spot where um where we would uh um, we would do pretty well. And we had an amazing hunt. 
um, and we had a really, really fun hunt. Uh, in the scurry, um, I actually forgot my shell belt in the car, which had my shells in it. So Joe lent me a couple of shells until I had to run back and uh, and get the the shells, and then uh, and then get back out. But uh, d there were a lot of amazing passes, a bunch of mallards in the area. Uh, we had this one pass with thirty mallards over our head all at once, and they were interested, but did not commit to coming into our pod. And, um, and so we did not get any on that pass, but uh, there was a pass with uh, two mallards, a drake and a hen that, uh, that came through and, um, and I shot the, the hen and then uh, Joe shot the, the drake. Um, I went out to get the hen and it went underwater and I grabbed it and, uh, and realized it had a band on it. Uh, and this, it, for those that aren't familiar with duck hunting, a band um, is an ID where uh, you can kind of see that where the uh, the bird was hatched and where uh, where it was banded, kind of learn a little bit about that that bird. But it's really a trophy for duck hunters. Uh, I got my first band last season. Um, it's it's a rare thing. Um, and my buddy Joe had shot five, like 500 birds and still hadn't gotten his. But he said he shot that uh, that hen as well. And uh, and so we kind of split on it. And at the end, I wanted to. Um, I just wanted to give it to him because I didn't want it to be a thing between us. And I wanted, he'd it, it worked so hard. It was his spot that we hunted at. And I was super proud, you know, to be able to hunt with him and, uh, and to be able to share that with, uh, with my buddy. So um, I ended up walking away with three birds, three mallards uh, today. And, uh, and I'm more than happy with that. I, I love it. I'm stoked. Right. So uh, all in super great really tiring days because it throws my sleep schedule to shit it throws it to shit uh like i'm it's sleep going to sleep earlier than i i should be i'm waking up earlier than i should be because i can't get more than like six six and a half hours of sleep so i was awake at two today uh being this being recorded on a sunday uh i was awake at two with which was several hours before i needed to be awake two hours before i needed to be awake but my body was just like yep you're ready because I went to sleep at like eight. So it was, uh, uh, it was, it was, you know, an early day, but it was good and productive. And I'm super stoked on, uh, on how it all turned out. Everybody had a great time. And that's what matters, right? You got to be, get out with buddies and uh, enjoy our hobby that we have together. So it was uh, a lot of fun. And I wanted to share that here on the program. Um, as I said, we have Lyrics uh, Born on the, on the program now. This is the third time I've interviewed Lyrics Born. I interviewed him last May with Cutso, um, and uh, they were both separate um, in the interview. We did a, a good Zoom interview, and Lyrics Born is on tour right now. And, uh, and so I had a chance to catch him while he was in, I think, Portland uh, in his uh, hotel, and we chatted for a while and just had a really freaking great chat. Uh, and I really, really enjoyed it. So I'm, let's go ahead and let's bring in Lyrics Born now. Well, LB, how are you doing today? I'm doing okay, man. Thank you. Yeah, I'm doing all right. I'm just in, uh, I, I got the day off. I'm in Portland at the moment. And uh, just um, taking it easy after a, you know, a great first week of the Vision Board Tour, man. So yeah. I'm just sitting here in the hotel, man. I'm about to cook some breakfast. You know, I try to keep my routine as basically I try to keep it as homey as possible. You know, it's not really that possible, <laughs> but I try. Yeah. yeah. So we so to do it. Well, tell me about the tour. How's it? Uh, has it been going so far? I know we're you know, a little bit it's into really it. Yeah, it's re it's really been going well. Um, thank you for asking. But we're, um, we're like I said, we're about a week in, and uh, right now we're like in the Pacific Northwest leg, and so uh, uh, we we just played Hood River, Pendleton, uh, and t tomorrow is Portland, and then the next day will be Seattle, and then Eugene, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, it's been awesome, man. I mean, I, it, it's a lot. A lot of artists find playing new songs a little nerve wracking, you know. But I really love playing new songs. I love playing songs that uh, people haven't heard yet, 
you know, because you, you, you get to test them out, you know, you really get to see if they translate live and, and what, you know, the, the, the great thing about playing songs live is you can make changes. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and that so, was, yeah, that was one of my things for you too, because I mean, you've been doing this for so long. I mean, this right. tour is cu coming in right before uh, the new album. So, so, yeah. you know, you're, you're rolling out some new stuff they haven't heard. I mean, some stuff that they have off the, uh, the new album also, but you know, yeah. I mean, what does that dynamic look like for you? You've done tours in the past, of course, where, you know, where they, they know all the songs that you, you've done. I mean, you don't have a new album yeah. coming out necessarily, but this one is right before. So, so right. how, do you, how yeah. does that play in? Yeah, I mean, Diamond Door has just been like a fucking sing-along. It's crazy, you know? Yeah. It's really, it's really cool to see, you know? It's, it's really taking off, you know? And um, I love it it's 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 what every artist hopes for you know you, you don't really i say this all the time it's like once you you can make a song and but once it gets out into the ether you have no control over who hears it or how people respond to it or you know you really don't man and uh it's even even if i think i have a hit it's not up to me to decide people have to like it you know, for it to become a hit. But I, with Diamond Door, I knew we had something very special. You know, yeah. I knew we, I knew we had something very special. And um, uh, it, it's, it's proving to be that way. I mean, these shows are more packed than tours that I've done in recent years I mean by all accounts this I mean we're all we're we're a weekend and this tour is a fucking smashing success you know what I mean and he, again I had some trepidation because this is the first tour full-on tour where you're doing consecutive shows back to back to back for weeks on end in three years since before the pandemic you know yeah yeah, well, so I want to ask about Diamond Door in particular, right? Thank you. You put it on Instagram or tweeted or something. You went home to visit your mom and she invited you in her, her Diamond Door. To... <laughs> You're like, no, no. <laughs> that was so fucking weird, man. You're like, there's Just a lot having... <laughs> Right. I mean, having her and her friends singing that song is just like, I mean, on the one hand, you're like, I'm, you know, I'm happy you like my shit, mom. Thank you for supporting. It's like, thank you for coming to my football game or, you know, yeah, whatever, you know. But, you know, when she told me to come into her diamond door, bro, that was wild. I was like, no, thanks. I'll stay on your concrete porch, you know. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's a good way to put it. Let's, let's stay out here. We'll draw that line in the sand, you know. Like, yeah, close let's... And yeah that's gonna be a hard no you know <laughs> don't ever repeat oh that didn't sound good either man but you know <laughs> you can't stay away from it so a hard no in the diamond door got it okay uh, for uh, uh yeah uh well that's that's pretty funny um a couple of other things i wanted to, to note you know while i was scouring your social media a little bit i mean i follow you but i was you know getting ready um someone said you were aging like a hip-hop benjamin button and i thought that was that was pretty cool keeping young know, man. i i don't know how to respond to that man all, all i can tell you is that i i mean i really appreciate that compliment you know i think a lot of it has to do with you know asian don't raisin beige don't age you know yeah yeah uh, gold don't fold let me see what else i can come up with on the top of my head man uh you know what i mean anyway i mean yeah. i i appreciate the compliment man i mean i i think i however also um i work very very hard to stay somewhat in shape you know what I mean? And I've worked very, very hard to get from where I was to where I am. And as much as it's been a physical change for me, 
it's really been a spiritual shift also, you know, and, and a, a psychological shift, you know, and, um, you know, I think for me, like, what's always kept me motivated and inspired is just setting challenges for myself, you know, and, and goals every step of the way. You know, when I was a kid, my goal was I want to make an album. You know, after I made the first album, my goal was I want to make a second album, you know. And then after a while, I was like, huh, I wonder if I can get to 10, you know. And those were my goals at that time. And, you know, I still I still have those kinds of goals, too. But my goals have expanded. You know, it's not just about what I want to do career wise. Like w one of my goals now is I want to live to be 100. You know what I mean? And so. It's like, what do I need to do to achieve that? You know, yeah. what, what is, and then, then let me work my, let, let me work my way backwards, you know? Yeah. So, you know, God willing, I'll get there, you know, but that is definitely my goal, you know? Taking care of yourself, taking care of yourself. And you hit on the, how hard you work and, and everything. And that kind of ties into the third kind of last thing from social that I, that I got that I wanted to ask you about. And that was, yes. um, you, you tweeted, why as a culture do we have this expectation that artists and famous people should be more evolved, enlightened wise and, and omnipresent uh, than the rest of us? Why do we project unrealistic perfection on them? Where do these standards come from? Do you feel that that kind of um, is kind of thrust upon you and how much kind of do you, um, do you push yourself to kind of, either meet your your expectations or the expectations of, uh, that are put forth for, for, for you? That's a great question. And I'm glad that you're pulling all your talking points off of my Twitter, man. Everything. Uh, it, we're just going down right. tweet by tweet. We're going, we'll are we get back to 2012. Yeah. You know? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> it's all there. Uh, that you're on Twitter, you know, by the way. I think people say Twitter's dying. But hey, look at us talking about it now. Right. Um. I think it's fucking stupid, you know? I think it's fucking stupid. I think, you, you know, the music business and the entertainment business has a way of creating stories that we believe, you know? And I almost feel like it's an entire business built on selling the dream you know, selling the fantasy. And I'm not going to lie, at some at some points, you know, I've benefited from that. I think all artists have, you know, we all benefit from mystique, you know what I mean? And that happens, you know, but I think fame, it, it, people's perception of fame and notoriety it, we exalt people you know and we we turn them into demigods they don't do that yeah. we do that you know the way that it's i have this have you heard the album have you heard vision Blue? oh yeah 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 we're gonna talk about it yeah okay so in in the song who's the best dear young lb you know, I, I have this line that says, you know, how people perceive you or see you has more to do with who they are, not who you are. Deep breaths, you know, and that goes both ways, whether they see you negatively or positively. That's based on their experience. A lot of times, you know, people's people's perception of you, how they I think I said how people re receive you, you know, has, sure. has more to do with who, who you are, who they are, not who you are. And we have this weird relationship with fame. And I think, admittedly, a lot of us stoke that fire as people in the public eye. You know, we, we cultivate that, you know. But I think it's really important to note that we all were, we all have, we all were born from a human being. We all die the same way every human being does, you know. We all were born with emotions, you know, and we all were born, we all grew up, many of us grew up with some sort of trauma. And particularly those of that in that trauma 
especially from childhood, it plays out in adulthood. And I forget who said this, but it's like, you know, success doesn't change you. It actually amplifies who you already are. You know what I mean? And yeah. I think we should, I mean, I could point to a million examples of that, you know, ultra successful and sort of moderately successful. Like we can point, point to a lot of people that just sort of fall in that category, you know, and, or, or they, they sort of exemplify that kind of behavior or, you know what I mean? And, um, I, I just think that it's unrealistic for us to feel that way about these people. You know, we, we, we try to mask the flaws that we have in ourselves by projecting perfection on other people, you know, right. Maybe that maybe I'm so flawed, but maybe that perfect person does exist. So maybe I can believe in this person, you know what I mean? Hold them to a higher standard and count cancel culture culture and, you know, yeah, everything, everything tied to that. Right. Like, right. And so, and so a lot of times these people are just being who they are. They're, they're, we are being who we are you know we're just being us as human beings and it doesn't meet this totally unrealistic standard that we don't even hold ourselves to you know as spectators you know and then suddenly i mean i don't give a fuck about any of that you know to right. be honest it's like i don't care you know it's like i don't who, who gives a shit i mean like you know i've been in this business i know what people are like you know, and the thing about the music business and the entertainment business in general is a lot of us find ourselves in this business because we are so flawed. It's a very flawed business. You know what I mean? As a just as a culture, as a business culture is extremely dysfunctional, you know, especially the music business. You know what I mean? And and it's no wonder that a lot of us who are who have had, I don't like the word flawed, you know, like people say flawed and I, I don't like using that because really what that means is just, you've experienced a lot of trauma and it shows it's and it, and it, and it shows up in certain ways in our daily lives, in our, in our character sometimes, you know what I mean? And everybody experiences that on some level, but the, the, the point is that, particularly entertainment business really kind of sometimes can cater and feed those parts in our psyche and those parts in us that are still traumatized and i think that's why a lot of us find ourselves in this business you know what i mean yeah yeah for sure um i mean I, let me just start let me just add on to that because the barrier of entry is very low you know what i mean if you want to be an or i mean if you want to be a musician all I got to do is download a few apps, you know, record myself and I can call myself a recording artist and put it up yeah. on Spotify and I can call myself a recording artist and boom, I am in the game. It's a you lot different I mean? than when you started, right? You know, I mean, like it, yeah. anybody can do it now. Yeah. And I mean, but that's, that's not the point that I'm trying to make. You know, it's not like if you want to be an accountant, you know, for uh, Charles Schwab, you know, if you want to be a banker for Charles Schwab, there's quite a bit, there are quite a few steps that you have to go through to, to get to that point. You know what I mean? It's not like that. It's not like that. And so you get all kinds, bro. You know what I mean? You get all kinds in the job. You know what I mean? And um, you can say that's good or bad. I mean, I, I, I happen to believe that there's nothing wrong with people coming as they are and having a lot of access to me that's one of the beautiful things about art and music you know but you have to take us as we come you know what i mean you can't sit here and be like oh this motherfucker went to etiquette school you know what i mean or this mother or what was that what was that shit that like you know debutantes used to do back in the day like you know where they used to you know they they, they were groomed first we didn't come that way we can't nope. you know we didn't we just showed up bro you know what i mean and it's just like here we are bro you know and we don't have frankly nobody has that set of 
perfection skills that we are sometimes unrealistically expected to have, you know. And there are different ways to build that audience, whether it's through 10 years of, uh, of work and, and labor and building up multiple albums and kind of relearning and, and honing your craft, or you get lucky because with one YouTube video that goes super viral and then all of a sudden you have a career and you're, you're in that door, uh, right? Like, I mean, there's, there's different ways. And, you know, again, who's to say what's right or wrong, you know, but it's the, how hard you work, um, yeah. whether you, you'll stick around, right? That's right. Yeah. yeah i mean you really have to have a passion for it yeah you know and i mean that's anything man you, you really have to have a passion for it. i mean I, I kind of see like my son right he's it's a different generation the way that he's exposed and discovers music and art is different you know it's all digital it's all through youtube he's like this person got eight billion views it kind of and i mean i look at that artist sometimes and i'm i'm like okay but son look the real test is, the or, or the real statement is, your career, you know? Yeah. I've had big hits, you know? Now, I'm, they're not getting 80 million views, you know, on, on YouTube, but I've had big hits too. The fact is, though, I'm still here, you know, at, when those hits sort of dissipate, you know, because it's like, I read this... I saw this really incredible interview with Jay-Z about, you know, artists sort of occupying that white hot space, you know? Yeah. And it is sort of a, a rotating wheel, you know what I mean? It's like a, and, you know, it's kind of stops, you know, and then boom, this person occupies that slot at this moment in time. And then that moment passes and then the next person occupies. And that's sort of that slot. And that's sort of like that white hot space, you know what I mean? And because of the way that we're exposed to music and consume music now that that wheel moves a lot faster than when i first started you know because there were the barrier of entry was higher you know yeah but um you really have to if, you, if you're going to stay on the wheel you have to be passionate about what you do you know yeah and your son's 12 years old right so like is he he's, thir is he's he, 13 now 13 he's now he just okay. turned 13 yeah so does he yeah. have that passion? Does he, I mean, does he, do you see the, him kind of following in your footsteps, doing his own thing? What does that look like? And how do you support from the sidelines? I, Being think, that you said it, I, I think you said it exactly the same, the, the right way, you know, following in my footsteps by doing his own thing. You yeah. know what I mean? That's the best that I can hope for. That's the example that I can try, that I try to set is like, you can do whatever you want, but it needs to be your own thing. Music is just one thing out there in the world. You know, it's just yeah. one little thing that exists in this entire world, you know, and you can do any of those things as long as it's your own thing, you know? And I said, I don't care if you make billions. I don't, I mean, I hope you may, I hope you do. You know what I mean? If that's what you want. But really what's important is that you do what it is that you feel passionately about and you have a spiritual connection to. You know what I mean? And I also told him, be prepared. You also, you might have to have more and more job. You know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, especially I, at the beginning. Yeah, you don't just like fall into it. Again, usually you don't fall into it, become rich and, you know, be able to support yourself. You have to build it, yeah. right? But I mean, even even me now, I mean, I have multiple streams of income, you know what I mean? And that some are music related, some are not, you know, and I, and I said, you know, this is sort of, even when you're successful, it's still a gig economy and the, and the smart guys and smart women, men and women understand that, you know what I mean? Yeah. And I said, you know, you have, you're going to have to, I love being a dad, bro. I love, like, I love imparting all these things on him that you know my father was not able or my mother was not able to do for me you know i love this shit bro i yeah. love it you know I feel like it's hard it's hard you know he, he doesn't always want to listen you know but i love it you know and thank god we have that kind of relationship you know 
Yeah. yeah I, love I have a 12 year old daughter and I have a 12 year old daughter and a nine year old son. And so I, you know, it's, I feel it, you know, they don't always listen, but hopefully they see through the lessons that you, that you teach them and, you know, and the work ethic that you try and impart on them, you know, they can kind of see mm -hmm. that from the far, right? Yeah. You know, I mean, I, 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 I didn't, it was not easy for me growing up in this business, you know what I mean? And more than him seeing me succeed in music, what, what I think what's more important for me, for him to see is that I succeeded doing something I love and there's still more yet to come. You know, I think that's also the other thing that I want him to see is like, it's not, success is not just a point that you reach and then it's done. You know, it's like success, it has to happen in, or it should have, in my opinion, there should be stages, you, you yeah. know what I mean? Because I, I just, like, like I said, you know, now I want to live to be a hundred. I mean, that's just one of many other goals that I have, you know, and I think he should, I, I really want him to understand it. He should always have something to look forward to in life, no matter what stage he's at, you know? Yeah. It doesn't, it's not necessarily financial. It's not necessarily career oriented either, you know? So, yeah. Um, well, yeah, I wanted to talk about vision board a little bit more and then, uh, and then also mobile, mobile homies season one, because I, I chatted with you and Cutso like a year ago and be, before yeah. that album came out and, and the mobile homies, yeah. I have, I have a lot of questions on that too. So, but let's um, go. Let's go. Uh, vision board. So um, I'm the best rapper in the world. Is that the second single? I mean, it's the second song on the album, but is it going yeah. to be the second single too? Yeah, I can see that. Yeah, it's, yeah. So that's it's, actually, it's out there now. It's out okay. there now. I mean, obviously, I mean, I can't help what Vision Board is doing. It's taking off on its own, bro. I mean, uh, what Diamond Door is doing is taking off on its own. You know what I mean? Yeah. But, you know, I want to drop a lot of songs before the album comes out. You know, the album's out November 11th. So there's more, you know, there'll be more songs too. But um, I thought that those two songs paired together would give you a pretty nice spectrum of what's to come, you know, from this album. So no, they, they do. It's a good. It's a good sampling. Bang, bang, bang is great. I mean, you have a lot of really good songs on this album. And, yeah, Thank you, man. Look Thank forward you. to it. To it rolling out. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so mobile homies. Uh, that idea. I mean, we're going into COVID land here a little bit, right? You know, um, with that. But it's it's so creative and it feels almost like it breaks the rules a little bit with the you know insertion of podcast clips that connect the songs like it's right at the beginning of the of the track you know that uh, will be this clip from the pre the end of the previous song and uh, and did that did that come naturally what tell me kind of your idea about about putting that in like that clips from your podcast well i mean the idea for the album came from the podcast you know, yeah. I mean, just just the fact that we were all so um, isolated and confined. You know, my my friend who's a director, uh, Evan Leong, he did Snakehead and Lynn Sanity and really talented guy. He's like, everybody's at home. You've got a lot of friends. Open up the Rolodex, man. Let's start having some conversations and, and tape them. You know what I mean? And uh, I was like, cool. And then, you know, and then what 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 became clear during that time is that everybody was just as eager to talk as I was, you know, because yeah. we were all starved for connection, you know. And and I was like, well, shit, if this can be a hit podcast series, there's no reason why this can't be a great album, you know. And so I tapped a lot of those same people. And we just started making music remotely. I mean, I, at the time, it's it's almost crazy now. It's, it seems like forever ago, but you know, it was not. It was physically not possible to be in the same studio with people. You know what I mean? I mean, you had to. You really had to uh, do it remotely. It wasn't something that uh, that we had a choice in. So, but it was cool. You know, to be able to do that was awesome. You know. 
Yeah, the first the first of your I think your interviews that you did was uh, with the Teeth the Truth speaker and uh, and there's this clip in the song that made me go back and listen to that whole podcast episode, uh, the raw dogging nature piece, which uh, I just thought was a hilarious, great way to to kind of summarize where things were at at that moment, right? Yeah, he's great at that. He's great at coming up with like sound bites, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're like. What did I just hear? Wait, what? <laughs> That's right. He's great at that, man. Yeah. It was great. It was great. Um, t- tell me about recording with uh, with your wife. With, with your wife, and she's on Long Shot. Um, also, Did, have you recorded yeah. with her a lot? And kind of was like, how does how does that, that come about? Long Shot was actually one of the only songs, one of like two or three songs that we recorded just prior to the pandemic just prior to like we were actually in the studio for that one in a studio for that one um i think i may have done my verse though remotely um and i i don't know that you know that was the first song that she had had like a first real solo song that she had done in a long time you know what i mean where it was just her featuring yeah. me and not me featuring her you know and i loved it man i mean you know uh, galactic did the track and um we all wrote it together and it, it was just the music was recorded remotely obviously because they're all in new orleans but um it was just it was just really really dope to be able to hear her have her own material again you know what i mean for me and yeah. like I, to be honest, I didn't even need to be on that song. You know, I really didn't. That, that's her song. You know, but because it was going on Mobile Homies, you know, it was a collaborative album, and so it, I mean, it, it just sort of was more cohesive, and it made more sense for me to be on the song. You know, but um, I'm really happy, and, and for her to be able to do that live is cool too. You know. Yeah. 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 That's really awesome, and you, and you did a couple with Con Brio, and they're they're amazing. I mean, I remember like um, I've I've interviewed them a handful of times, and Zeke has this voice that is just, I mean just unlike any other. Right, he's like mixing Michael Jackson and Prince, and uh, his stage presence is incredible. Like you know, yeah. I mean, I love that band. I love what they're about. I think he's probably one of the best front men in the game. Period. You know, at any level. You know um and i I, i've always loved them you know i mean they're from the bay area so i was i was able to see them kind of start you know and um they've always been like really awesome people too you know what i mean like it didn't matter how how big the gig was that they were playing, large or small. I mean, they were always very, very, um, they were always very, very respectful to me, you know, and and uh, that goes a long way with me, you know what I mean? It really does. So uh, I love those guys, you know. Is he still making music, Zeke, you know? Zeke is, yeah. I mean, he's okay. doing solo stuff as far as I know. I haven't talked to him since the pandemic, you know I mean? we. We we go back on it, on it, forth on Instagram here and there, you know, but um, I, I'm not. I've seen the Blue and and Marcus the Horn guys because sometimes they play in my band, you know. Sometimes they'll I'll do shows with them, like I'll, I'll borrow the Concombrio horns, and you know, they'll um they'll play with me. But um, I haven't seen Zeke, uh, but we're we're in touch, you know. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. I'm glad he's still still doing it. You know, yeah, he's got the pipes yeah. for it, so he's got to. You should keep it up. You know, great artist, fantastic <laughs> yeah. artist. And and then Randall Park also on this album, and he was on your your podcast too. And tell me about yeah. your your friendship that you built with him. Obviously, you were in a movie with uh, you know that he was in, right? So. That's my fucking guy, bro. You know, yeah. I mean, you, you know, he he reached out to me for always be my maybe you know, and he reached out as a fan and he reached out. I don't even like saying that, you know, because I'm such a fucking fan, you know, 
And he's a dude, man, that um, he's really about it. You know, obviously fucking talented actor, crazy talented, super funny, bro, you know. But beyond that, he's just a solid guy, you know. I mean, you know, and I've since met his brother and I've since met like a lot of his friends, like his circle of friends that he started with in UCLA. Like that's how him and Ali know each other. And they all feel the same way about him that I do. You know, it, it's just, he's just such a solid person. Um, it doesn't matter what he's working on, you know, anywhere in the world. Um, I'll text him and he's like, hey man, I'm on set right now. I'm directing something. I can't, let me hit you later. But the album is dope, you know, love you too. You know what I mean? He's just a great guy, man. You know, he's just a really great guy and he's very conscious of his position and where he is in the world and in the business and his place in history. And um, I love that about people, you know, but he's just a great guy. Anybody you talk to about him, I've never heard anybody say anything shitty about him in this in this business. And that's rare. Yeah, that's what you say. Yeah, yeah. You know, he. Let me, let me just give you an example. So he shot, I said, I want to do a a video for this song, Delicious. He's like, okay, but let me direct it. You know what I mean? I said, okay. When am I going to say no? No, 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 no. Right. And so he said, okay, I'm location scouting. (laughs) (laughs) Got to find the right restaurant. Uh Yeah. Right. So we shot at this restaurant and when I was, I was coming, you know, I, I live half time in LA. So I split time in L, between the Bay and LA and I was coming down to the house and I told, you know, the, uh, some of our mutual friends, I was like, yeah, we're shooting the, uh, the video for this song. It's delicious at the restaurant that we shot at, you know, while he was out location scouting. Right. And everybody hit me back and they're like, Oh bro, that's Randall's favorite restaurant. So I'm not really sure how much location scouting he did. <laughs> they he, they he, gave he, free food, right? So, you know, because, yeah, so I'm sure that, you know, it was good for him. But, but let me tell you, I mean, he's just such a great guy. I mean, he he, he shot it because he wanted to. Yeah. We actually did sit down and order that food, obviously, you know, and uh-huh. that food came. He wanted to pay the bill. I mean, this was such a <laughs> fucking Asian moment. Like in the video, you pay the bill, so that, that's. <laughs> I mean, he he charged me nothing for directing the video, right? Sure. He charged me nothing for being on the song, you know. Like when he came into the studio and recorded, he charged me nothing. You know, there was no fee, and I said, and he would not. He was like fighting with me, like we're you know the little tray that the bill yeah. comes in. Like I'm holding one end, he's holding the other. He's going back and forth back and forth meanwhile dan the automator is sitting in the middle like this <laughs> and he's like i'm just gonna keep eating my baked potato man yeah, man. <laughs> yeah. i mean that's that's the i mean it was such an asian moment like you know, let me pay no you pay no let me pay no you pay no let me pay let me pay let me pay but that's the, that's what i mean that's the that's the kind of great guy that he is and and i mean we have had you know, the conversation that we had on Mobile Homies was great, but the conversations that he and I have had just one-on-one are, are, have been really deep, you know what I yeah. mean? On, on, I mean, I can't tell you what we talk about, but it's, they, they have been, there has been some serious, serious depth. He's someone you could trust and good, really good yes. friend. And, yeah, yeah I, and, and I'm very proud to say that he's a great friend of mine. You know, I'm really proud to say that because he is such a solid guy. That's really cool. It's it's good yeah. to have the, you know some of those in your corner that you're like, okay, you have your friends, and but then the ones that you really drive with, and they you know will sure. always be there. You know, so. yeah. I mean, people that will always pick up the phone. Yep. You know, I mean, you, you, those those kind of people are in your life are special. You know what I mean? Oh, hundred percent. Yeah, and yeah. this goes beyond art and just like. 
the, the mutual respect that we have for each other as creatives. You know what I mean? It, it goes beyond that. Oh, for sure. For yeah. sure. He's a great yeah. fucking dude, man. Dan, That's too. Cool. Dan, too. I feel the same way about Dan. I mean, I've known Dan for a fucking, you know, I made my first record at Dan's studio. That was damn near 30 years ago. You know, when he lived with his, he lived with his parents. Like his mom used to call his name, Dan, (laughs) you know, like call down to the studio. You're like, we're recording down here. Okay, mom, keep it, keep it. Mom. (laughs) You know, that kind of shit, you know. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Dan is, Dan, I mean, you know, he's really looked out for me, you know, and we look out for each other, you know what I mean? So, uh, it's, yeah. that's, a, that's a really special relationship too, man. Totally. That's, that's yeah. great. Uh, so mobile homies, you're, I mean, uh, the podcast, you're going to do, uh, do some more of those, right. And, and then another, you want to do another album every year and a half for mobile homies. I'd like to. Yeah. 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 I've already got songs that are completed for the next one. So I, I love it, you know. I mean, you know, I love everything I'm doing right now. To be honest with you, man. I mean, yeah. I mean, like vision board to me, mobile homies to me is just fun. You know, there's no pressure. I don't have to tour behind it. You know what I mean? I don't. It doesn't matter if there's a lot of singles or not. You know, I'm not. It, you know, there's no. It, I finish them as they get done. You know. Um, and that's cool, but like, I love everything I'm doing right now. I mean, vision board, I don't think I've ever done an album like this before, you know, with the, with the kind of types of songs that I'm doing right now, you know, it's just very phantasmic. I don't know what the yeah. fucking word is, you know, it's a great I mean? word. That works. <laughs> yeah. And it's just great to be able to play all these songs, these new songs off a new studio album and tour once again, you know, and just seeing the response is can't beat it, man. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you're playing the independent when you get, get home to the Bay. And, um, and yeah. so, I mean, I'm sure you've played the independent a thousand times, but you know, what I love is, it. is it? When it, is it one of your top venues? What are, you, what are your favorite places to play? You know, that's one of them. That's one yeah. of them. I mean, I, I consider you know, and I've played at this point, especially in the Bay Area. I mean, I've played played damn near every venue. There's, I mean, from the Greek Theater to the Warfield to the Fillmore. Multiple, more. I mean, all these places multiple times. You know, to you know, the five, I mean, large and small, I played every single venue, I think, in the Bay Area, you know, from 200 seaters to, you know, 10,000 seaters, you know, and, and that's not bullshit. I mean, it's just, yeah. I have, you know, but the, the independent always will have a soft spot in my heart, you know what I mean? And um, I think it's because I played it when it was a club, when Michael O'Connor first opened it up as the Justice League, you know, it was really sort of a hotbed for hip hop in the 90s, you know, and it's obviously, I mean, he's still involved, but, you know, another planet owns it now. So, you know, shout to Alan Scott and the whole squad over there, you know, and um, that's a, that's also a relationship that I've had for almost 30 years since the beginning, wow. you know. And so, I mean, you know, for me, it just has like a really high emotional value, you know, and uh, and the people behind it, I have a great relationship with, you know. Yeah. So, and that, again, for me, that means a lot, you know, like those, those you'll probably get from this conversation that. Um, friendship and loyalty means a lot to me, you know, and, and relationships mean a lot to me because we don't, if there's one thing also that the pandemic has shown us is how much community and connection, I mean, it really, it really has value, you know? Yeah. And I, I try to preserve that and honor that. I, you know, maybe I took that for granted when I was younger, but I don't, now, you know? Yeah, no, that, that makes sense. And it's so true. It's so important. I mean, those things are, you know, core values of mine too. So I dig it. Um, sure. You know, you know, I'll, 
Fillmore Fil- is my favorite place to see shows. It's, I mean, you yeah. can't go wrong there. The energy there, the apples, there's magic in those apples. And, you know, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> it's, it's historic for a reason, man. You know, it's yeah. historic for a reason. Yeah. I, one of the things that I was, I mean, the, one of the first great losses, you know, from COVID was Slims. And uh, I mean, I grew up going to shows there and uh, yeah. and just to see it gone, just, no, you know, <laughs> it, was a, yeah. it was bad. I love Slims. Oh, that's great. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, well, LB, thanks for taking the time. Um, Ray did, from Ravy did want me to tell you, he says, hey. So, <laughs> Ray. Uh, He's he's a great guy. I was chatting with him before we, we talked, and he's got stories too. So <laughs> Ray is a vet, right? You know, and, and I don't, you know, can I just say that this before we go? Yeah. Ray is a fucking legend. You know what I mean? Ray is a fucking legend. He fucking worked in sync. He was yeah, in. Yeah. He was the Backstreet Boys publicist, bro. Come on, <laughs> and. and as an Asian American in the music business, he might have the longest career. Yeah. You, you know, and I don't know if he really gets his flowers like he should, but I mean, this guy's been doing it forever. He's, he's been doing you know, it. And, yeah. and he's still, he's still enthusiastic about it, you know? Oh, he loves so, it. Yeah. 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 Ray's a legend, man. Yeah, that's what he's doing. He's a great guy. I've been working with him. You know, he's given me a lot of bands over the years. So I've, yeah. uh, <laughs> Good. grateful to him for that too he's so. a good person to know man yeah for sure for sure yeah. well it'll be good luck him and, good james. Luck with him and james yeah uh, yeah yeah exactly jim Fox. Yeah. yeah um yeah well well good luck with the rest of the tour man and uh and the the show at the independent and and on and i know you you're not slowing down you're not stopping so so keep it up and we'll, we'll see you out there okay thank you man i appreciate it that was my interview with lyrics born here on concert pipeline And typically that would take us to the final segment of the program, the music news, but I'm foregoing music news right now to, uh, in the interest of another topic, let's say, and that is uh, a much needed break uh, for me from from Concert Pipeline. Uh, I'll kind of give some history here. Um, Concert Pipeline was birthed in 2005, I believe, uh, as a uh, television show uh, that I used to do, in which I'd interview bands. Uh, it went on for a while there, maybe till 2008. Uh, on the, you know, it petered off at 2008. And when I, you know, I had some kids at that point. Um, I had one. Did I have a kid? Well, no. My daughter was born in 2010. I didn't have any kids yet. Uh, but uh, but I moved away from the, the Bay Area, and there weren't as many shows. I kind of just, you know, tabled it and moved on. Um, and then. Uh, to uh 2009 uh, i'm getting all my dates mixed up here 2014 2014 is when uh, i was talking to my buddy joe same hunting buddy who um i hunted with today um i was talking to him and telling him you know look I'm, i miss interviewing bands uh i'm gonna start the uh, i think i want to start concert pipeline and back up as a podcast is that crazy and uh and he said no no you should do it and i'll join you right and hadn't even crossed my mind to to bring him in. He is the inspiration for a lot of what I know about music. Uh, and I mean, it kind of helped form my music taste in uh, the early years of when I, when I was most influential, let's say, in listening to good music, right? 2002, 2003, around then was when we started becoming friends. And, we, and he hosted uh, a show with me um, called Stage Right back then that we, that we did uh, for like 14 or 15 episodes, uh, not a long time. But, um, but he said he'd, he'd roll Concert Pipeline with me uh, uh, back out. And I was like, that's great. You know, much rather do it with a friend than, um, than fly solo. So, uh, so we rolled Concert Pipeline out in January of 2014. And, and it's been this thing that I've done every week since then really joe uh was acted as co-host for the first hundred episodes didn't do all the interviews did some here and there when he could uh but um would always be there for the the show really right and uh, and as a big part of it it was this thing that was always um you know 
just a, a thing for me. And then, and then at the hundredth episode, my buddy Jens took over and he did a couple hundred episodes, probably over 200 episodes all in, uh, that he did. If I were to go back and count, uh, which I'm not going to do. Um, so he did a bunch. Right. And, uh, and then, uh, and it was great. We had fun. He did some interviews again, maybe not all of them, but he'd be there for the show and, uh, as the co-host and, uh, and it was a lot of fun. And for the past couple of years, I've been flying solo with concert pipeline, um, uh, and, which is which is cool because it's just always been this outlet for me to um, to chat with bands, get you know, and expose um, artists to uh, to fans, and kind of have great conversations really with with bands about um, their history and starting and everything along those lines. Um, and and I go, I've gone through waves with it where it's like it's challenging. Uh, and then I always get these, you know, the amazing interview. It, it's like an amazing interviewer show. that's uh, like, this is why I do this. Right. Uh, it's a lot of fun. Um, uh, but, uh, but it's been nonstop since 2014. I've never taken a break really. I've rarely ever missed, uh, uh more than a week of the, the program, sometimes two shows in a, in a week. On rare occasions, you know, when there's like Bottle Rock Festival, sometimes that'll be three episodes in a week that I have to uh, host interviews and uh, and edit and bust out uh, in one week. It's a lot of content and a lot of work to, to kind of make that all happen. And I enjoy it and I love it. And it's a passion and it's a piece of me. And, uh, and it's, it's uh, as we gear up towards episode 400, we're on 392 right now. Uh, we get, we're getting close to 400. Um, I don't want to overdo it. Uh, so I'm at this point where I need to take a breather right now. I don't know what that exactly that looks like. That might be till January uh, where I take, just take two months off maybe unless the right interview comes through where I'm like, I can't pass that up sort of thing. Um, I'm, you know, the great thing about this podcast is it's on my own terms and, uh, and I'm able to do it whenever it works out. Right. Uh, I get offered a lot of bands and I've worked with a lot of great publicists, tour managers, managers. Um, I, I want to call out uh, a couple, John Lappin, uh, Ray Rolden from Raby. Uh, you know, I, I mean, there's some people from Stunt Company. There's, there's a lot of great other publicists, that, uh, Lucy Sabini that I've worked with, uh, a lot of great publicists and managers that I've worked with that have given me bands and uh, allowed me to uh, talk to their bands uh, um, on the program. So much fun. So this isn't the end. Um, I'm going to bring concert traveling back. I don't think I could do without it, but especially with getting into duck hunting season, like I talked about earlier, it's kind of the time to take a moment and just slow down, focus on the ducks, uh, focus on my kids uh, who I see him getting a lot more time with right now as they are, um, I, their schools are based in, in Vacaville and I see them for almost every day uh, and, uh, and just slow it down a little bit. And I got to be okay with that. And so um, this is me saying that Concert Pipeline is taking a, a brief hiatus. We will be back again. I'm probably thinking early January right now, but it could be sooner um, or it could be shortly after that, you know. Uh, so like, subscribe the podcast, give comments or feedback if you've tuned into episodes, um, check it out on, you know, all the socials, you know, all that fun stuff, uh, because uh, I would love to hear from um, from listeners and viewers about uh, what their thoughts are on the program and any interviews that they've liked. I've, I've enjoyed having so many interviews with, uh, with so many great bands, like too many to get into now. And I want to do something fun for episode 400 too, when we get to, uh, to that. Um, but uh, I don't need to rush it at the same time. Uh, I see that milestone and I'm a, a guy of milestones, but uh, um, we'll get there. It'll just probably be uh, early next year that uh, that I hit 400. I've been doing it for nine years, um, and uh, and it's uh, it's been a lot of fun. So um, for all of us here at Concert Pipeline, I'm Steve Jones taking the much needed break. We'll catch you next time.